Hey everyone, welcome to another episode from The Colonialist. This is Merva Karuva, the European Fire Ant. Don't forget to subscribe and like if you love this species like I do. They truly are a really enjoyable species to keep. I'll go over some of the reasons why and also their care requirements. This species is widely distributed across the UK and Europe. However, these ladies have traveled and believe me, they have grown to dominate many parts of the globe where they are now considered invasive species in such countries as Canada, America and Japan, just to name a few. Just like Solenopsis, Mamaka rubra are able to sting. Due to their swarm behavior, they are considered aggressive. They're polygene, which means they can have multiple queens and they're polydomus, meaning that one colony can have multiple nest sites and having two types of queen, a larger one which acts as a queen and smaller queens which act as workers and often go unnoticed. Using this tactic, they are able to grow a colony incredibly fast and they produce large amounts of brood. It's very impressive to see. This is the primary reason that their cycle from egg to ant has been undocumented because it's so difficult to track. Being a European species, they do hibernate, which means they do get a break in their brood production and brood growth rate slows during this time. Another factor that has made it so difficult to document. I love this species because of how confident they are and how easy they are to care for. They do not require a heat source as they like to be kept at about 19 degrees Celsius, which is 66.2 degrees Fahrenheit. This means they'll happily live at room temperature. They will adapt to almost any environment that you put them in and are very forgiving to any mistakes made by the amateur keeper. The challenge arises because of how good they are at escaping. They are a pretty small species at about six millimeters for the workers. They are quite intelligent and will stick bits of dirt over a barrier to try and create a bridge. This is something you have to be mindful of as they can sting. Although a single sting from a single worker will not irritate you too much. Hundreds of stings from hundreds of workers can cause a problem, especially if you have an allergic reaction. My best advice to counter this is to keep on top of their maintenance. Check their barriers often to see if they've stuck dirt to it. If they have, simply scrape the dirt off and reapply the barrier. Now for the fun part. If you feel you're ready to start keeping this species, or you're already keeping this species and want some useful hints and tips, these are my personal tips from my experience of keeping Mermica rubra. They absolutely love humidity. Their nest, at minimum, needs to be around 80% humidity. They will thrive in this environment. And a great way to achieve this is to use cocoa fiber substrate. Simply soak the cocoa fiber in water, let it soak it all up, and then place small amounts of cocoa fiber into the acrylic nest if you're using the acrylic nest. Otherwise, if you're using a natural nest for them, then simply mix up cocoa fibre with sifted and baked child's play sand. This is a fantastic mix that they'll be able to make some great tunnels from and they won't suffer from tunnel collapses as long as it remains humid. My next tip is going to raise some eyebrows. I know what people are going to say already. Live feeding. This species does actually benefit from the stimulation of live feeding. And to do this safely, I always recommend flightless fruit flies as they can be dispatched within mere seconds of coming into contact with a Myrmica rubra worker. This replicates their natural need to hunt in the wild but it's also the most ethical choice because of how quickly the animal can be dispatched without suffering. Due to the amount of brood they produce and the amount of larvae that they have to feed they're very protein hungry but they are also very carbohydrate hungry. They love sugars so make sure you keep this topped up but feed sporadically, once every four to six days maybe. As tempting as it may be for the inexperienced keeper, do not skip hibernation for this species. It's incredibly important that they get this break. They hibernate from late September to early April. To achieve this, slowly lower their temperatures to around 10 degrees Celsius and keep them there until you're ready to bring them out of hibernation. Then slowly over days, increase their temperatures to 19 degrees Celsius. If you need to, please check the conversion charts for the Fahrenheit temperatures. Due to the speed at which this species can grow, it's advisable to have nests ready for them, sized up for them to be moved into. This way you don't have to panic last minute when they suddenly have an explosion in population. This brings me to the end of the episode. Stay tuned and take this second to subscribe. I'll soon be running competitions with some giveaways provided by some really kind retailers. Hit the bell icon so you don't miss out. For now, this is The Colonialist, signing out.